Hey, this is Derek Wooten. I'm lead pastor of Makers Church here in Cincinnati, Ohio, where our desire is to make disciples and make a difference. Thank you so much for joining us through our podcast. We pray this message speaks life and encouragement into you and what God is doing in your life. Hope you enjoy it. Come on, be seated all over the room. We're going to uh, we're gonna move a little forward today a little differently than we typically would. Um, I want to get right into the Word today. Uh, and share for a few minutes, and then I'm going to be honest, at the end of our service today, we're, we're going to get in the altar, and we're going to be praying. How many of you guys know there's a lot of things the church should be praying about right now? There's a lot of things that are happening and taking place in our world that we are witnessing, and I, and I believe this wholeheartedly. We cannot be ignorant of what is happening, nor can we be arrogant enough to think just because it's not happening in the United States that it doesn't affect us. And so I believe that there are some things today. I, I had a whole different message. I was going to start teaching on the Spring Feast of the Lord today. And as we watched what happened last night to the nation of Israel, the Lord said, no, you're going to teach on this. So I don't have any teaching slides today. I've got about 7,000 scriptures. So get ready for those. But I believe the Lord needs to remind us today of the, of the importance of what God is doing here at Maker's Church, but I believe what God is doing in the body of Christ at large around the world. So if you're ready to get in the Word with me today, somebody say amen. So last week we, we, we talked about, um, we talked about and we, and we looked at the reality of, of living transformed and understanding that if we want kingdom living, we need kingdom thinking. Is anybody thankful for the mind of Christ today? Uh, hopefully you've been putting on the mind of Christ daily, understanding that when God transforms your thinking, every part of who you are begins to transform because when you think God, like God, you can't help but live like Jesus in the earth. And so, so we, we talked about that, but last week specifically when we talked about having access to the mind of Christ, we took time in this altar in both of our services and we prayed Ephesians chapter one, verses 17 and 18. I wanna remind you what those scriptures say because this was the uh, apostle Paul, but I felt the Lord say, pray this as a, as a church. So we, we, we asked the Lord to give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. How many of you guys know that we have access to the spirit of wisdom and revelation? Why? So that we may know him better so we may understand better. And then we go a little further, go to, go to verse eight. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be open. Listen, I believe for everything that's taking place in the world in which we live right now, we must ask the Lord to let the eyes of our heart be open, to see correctly what God is doing. How many of you guys know that things that are happening are prophetically fulfilling what God said was going to happen? And if you don't, we're gonna talk about that today. But we prayed that we would receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of our heart would be specifically open to understand what God is saying and what God is doing. And so for a few minutes this morning before we pray together, I, I, I wanna just kind of build from there because I believe that God wants us to see correctly the things that are happening in our world currently. And so I, I wanna talk for a few minutes today. Um, I don't really have a title for today, so if you're putting one in your notes, just put uh, sermon. <laughs> uh, go right there. But, but the continued signs that we're seeing taking place in our world, can, can, I, can I tell you, we are approaching the end times, church. We're approaching, if we're not already in them in some shape, form, or fashion, we're approaching them quickly. And now when I say end times, I want you to understand the things that we read in God's word that happens towards the end of time, where we talk about the things that start happening in world governments and around the world, things about like the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ and the, the things that we'll see in different parts of our world. Some of those things are literally starting to get put into place and are coming to pass right now. And so what I want us to understand is, we, we, can I just be real for a minute? We've got to stop living like the end times are another thousand years away, okay? I, I, no one knows the time or the hour, but we cannot act like, well, it's definitely never gonna change things if we know it, it's never gonna change in our lifetime. We all thought that in 2019 and then 2020 came. And you should have been quickly quickened in your heart to understand, wait a minute, this thing can turn a lot faster than I thought it could. We find ourselves in some pivotal situations I believe that we need to pay attention to, church, this morning as we understand that the end times, we are approaching them quickly. And listen, that we must understand that our response is to be aware in the natural and it's in the spirit, to pay attention to things developing and taking place with the nations and the governments of this world. We need to be paying attention. But can I tell you why we're paying attention to those things? Can I tell you, we also have a responsibility in this time to be spiritually productive. 
to be spiritually productive during this season. Be, listen, be committed to not just protecting what we have in ourselves, but be committed to advancing the kingdom of God in spite of the things that we're seeing and witnessing. And I will tell you, one of those things that, that God is saying here, stirring it, we've been talking about it, is this is a church that we must be committed to prayer and intercession, not for ourselves, but for our nation and the nations of the world. We must be committed. Everybody say committed. How do you guys know that commitment is always seen in consistency? Do not tell me you're committed if you're not consistent, because if you're not consistent in your committed commitment, you're not really committed. But we must be committed to prayer and intercession. We must be committed to letting the eyes of our hearts to be open to see what God is doing. And listen, we must be committed to saying yes to the vision of the house and the kingdom. What is that? To make disciples and to make a difference. The vision of our church is so simple on purpose because the gospel of the kingdom is simple, but it's also supernatural. To make disciples and make a difference. We must be committed to understanding that is our beautiful assignment in this season. And so I, I want to start here this morning because I believe it's important what we're witnessing as we're talking about being committed to prayer, intercession, to being in tune and led by the Holy Spirit. I believe this with my whole heart. It's time for this church to pick up the mantle of what God is calling us to do. Come on, somebody. It's time that each of us and all of us understand there is a mantle that God has released on this church, an anointing, a purpose, a destiny that we must pick up and we must steward well into the season that we're stepping into. So the first thing I want to say is this. How many of you guys saw what happened to the nation of Israel last night? It's crazy what's happening over there. Now, when I talk about Israel, some of you actually think that support for Israel is political. It has nothing to do with politics. <laughs> I get to teach a little bit today. We literally have raised generations so ignorant that they think Israel has to do with conservative values. Israel has to do with the kingdom of God. And so, so listen to me. There, there are things happening in Israel right now that we need to pay attention to. Listen, things that happen in Israel absolutely affect us. Things that are happening in Israel absolutely affect us. Israel has been under attack for months and a fresh attack was just, just launched yesterday. Did you know there are three different attacks happening in Israel on a consistent basis now? You've got, you, 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 you've got uh, uh, the, the Hamas regarding Gaza. You've got Hezbollah in the north there. And now you've got Iran sending drones and missiles at them. And reportedly by the hundreds or even the thousands. Three different people. And guess what? It is the same enemy that is behind all three. It is radicalized Islam leading the charge on all three of those things. Now, how many of you guys know, we're, we're, not, we're not talking about opposition. We're talking about evil that is coming against the nation of Israel. We're talking about evil that is coming against the nation of Israel. Listen, it is the kingdom of darkness that is leading the charge in those things. It is literally Satan trying to attack God's people as they launch all of those attacks on the nation of Israel. And I want us to see something, because here's the deal. Yes, we have an election coming up in the fall that I believe shapes the landscape of our nation moving forward, and we should be praying for those things. Yes, we've got economy issues right now that we're dealing with, but none of us are trying to get in bomb shelters and cover our children from missiles that are being shot at us. Yet. Because if you think that, it, do you understand something? I, I believe that when the attacks happen to the nation of Israel, it's not just an attack on Israel, it's an attack on the free world. And so there are things that, that we need our eyes open to at a greater capacity because for too long the Western church says, if it doesn't bother my money or it doesn't bother my, my possessions, it doesn't really concern me. And that's not the right attitude. Can I get a witness today? Come on. We've got to have a perspective shift about what God is saying and what God is doing. And there's so many things happening around the world. But specifically, I want to bring us into this understanding about Israel because it's important. Because the, the Bible says to pray for Israel. To pray for, let me give you a few scriptures. Psalm chapter 20, 122 verses 6 and 7 says, pray for peace in Jerusalem. 
May all who love this city prosper. Oh, Jerusalem, may there be peace within your walls and prosperity in your palaces. Did you know the Bible actually says that the name of God resides in Jerusalem? God loves Jerusalem. He loves Jerusalem. How about Psalm 125, verse 5? May Israel have peace. May Israel have peace. How about this one, Psalm 129, verse 5? May all who hate Jerusalem be turned back in shameful defeat. We, I prayed that last night over every, everything that's attacking Israel right now. May everyone who hates Israel, may they be defeated in shame right now and turned. Because listen, that is not just an attack on a Jewish state. It is an attack on the people of God. It is an attack on the name of God. Come on. That's what we're seeing. That's what's happening. So there are scriptures and there's a, there's a few more. I don't have time to show them all today, but there's even more talking about us understanding how we should pray for Jerusalem, pray for Israel. And you say, pastor, why is it important we pray for Israel and the Jewish people? Here's why. Because as people in the kingdom, our savior and Lord is Jesus, right? Our savior and Lord is Jesus. And there is a true connection between us as Gentile believers and the Jewish people who God chose long ago. This is Bible, I'm gonna show it to you. There is a true divine connection between us today as Gentiles, meaning we're not Jew by birth, but there is a divine connection between us who call Jesus the Lord and Savior of our lives and the Jewish people. And it started a long time ago with a man named Abraham. So let's go all the way back to Genesis chapter 12. Is everybody with me right now? Genesis chapter 12, verses two and three. I need you to see the severity of why I'm saying that we are connected to these things. The Lord says this to Abraham or Abram at the time, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. Do you see, how many of you guys know that sentence right there has never changed? I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. Now look at the power of this, this text. All the families, everybody say all. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Now let me go further because there's New Testament scripture to back up what's still being said. Genesis chapter 22, this one's even more powerful. Genesis 22 verses 15 through 19. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, talking about Isaac. He, look at this, blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Listen, look at this. In your seed, all the nations, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Now look at those two scriptures. All families and all nations. All families in all nations. Abraham had faith in the same God that we serve today. How many of you guys know his name is Yahweh? Abraham had faith in the same God that we have faith in. And we are connected supernaturally because, listen, God loves us and he gave us the incredible opportunity to also become his people. God loves you and me. And he gave us the beautiful opportunity to be known as his people. Because here's the reality. While this covenant began with Abraham, it was Jesus who fulfilled it. Okay, everybody with me still? This covenant started with Abraham, but it was Jesus who fulfilled it. And listen, Jesus is the one because of what he did that allows all of us to receive the same covenant promises that God gave to Abraham. Now, if you don't know that, let me show you from God's word why this is so important. Right here, Galatians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. Look at this. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for, anybody thankful for Jesus today? Come on. <laughs> having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Look, here it is. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. How many of you guys know we're Gentiles? 
We're not second than or, or less than. We're just Gentiles. We're just not Jew by birth. Might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Look at this. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. The promise of the Spirit through faith. How about this one? How about Galatians chapter 3, verse 29? Look at this. And if you are Christ and we are Christ, we belong to Christ. You want to know why? Because he bought us and redeemed us with his blood. And if we are Christ, look at this, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means that everything that God promised to Abraham when Jesus came and he became the curse for us, we got to be a part of that blessing that he spoke over Abraham. We get to share in the richness and the fullness of everything God declared. And so now we are co-heirs with Jesus in the kingdom of God. But it's connected. Does everybody see how it's connected? No, no, no. This is why this is so important for us. This is so important. God loves all of his children and people, whether they are Jew by birth or not. He loves us all. In fact, there's more scriptures in Galatians that can say in Christ, uh, we're no longer Jew or Gentile, uh, uh, slave nor free, uh, 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 male nor female, all of those things. We are now the same. And that's important. That's important because there is, a, there is still a theology that's floating out in the world and even getting into some of Christianity that people say, well, hasn't God replaced Israel with us? It's called replacement theology. If you've never looked at it, Google it. You can just read a little bit about it. There's this thing called replacement theology that people say that the people of Israel, the nation of Israel has now been replaced by us. How many of you guys know that's not true? That's not true. And I want to show you from God's word that's not true. How we're still connected. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Look at this. The apostle Paul speaking. He says, I ask then, has God rejected his own people, the nation of Israel? Of course not. I myself, this is Paul, I myself and an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. He answers the question. He said, has God rejected his chosen people, the nation of Israel? What's the answer? Of course not. But let's keep going in Romans 11. We're going to go to verse 11 in Romans 11, and we got 13 verses. So I need you to put on your big boy britches for a minute. We're going to read through some text together. Starting at verse 11, look at this. Did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Of course not. They were disobedient. Oh, so powerful. So God made salvation available to you and me. Come on, somebody. God made salvation available to you and me. But he wanted his own people to become jealous and claim it for themselves. Now, if the Gentiles were enriched because the people of Israel turned down God's offer of salvation, think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. Listen, this is why even today we're going to pray that everybody who is a Jew by birth would encounter Jesus as their Messiah. It's important that we pray that. I am saying all this especially for you Gentiles. God has appointed me as the apostle to the Gentiles. I stress this, for I want somehow to make the people of Israel jealous of what you Gentiles have, so I might save some of them. Do you know right there, there's the, under, the understanding is there, that we should live in such a way in the kingdom of God that it would make Jews jealous of what we have in Jesus. That we, listen, that we don't, we don't just know Yahweh of the Old Testament, but we know Yahweh and we know Jesus as Lord and Savior in the New Testament as well. To live in such a way with power and authority that it would make them jealous to have what we have. How many of you guys know that shouldn't just apply to Jews, but it should apply to anybody? Anybody. Keep going. For since their rejection meant that God offered salvation to the rest of the world, their acceptance will be even more wonderful. It will be life for those who are dead. And since Abraham and the other patriarchs were holy, their descendants will also be holy. Just as the entire batch of dough is holy because the portion given as an offering is holy. He's actually talking about first fruits right there. We'll talk about that later. For it, here it is. For if the roots of the tree are holy, the branches will be too. 
How many of you guys know the root is Jesus? The root is Jesus. This is important as we keep reading. For if the roots of the tree are holy, the branches will be too. But some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people of Israel have been broken off. And you Gentiles who were branches from a wild olive tree have been grafted in. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. So now you also receive the blessing God has promised Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. But you must not brag about being grafted in to replace the branches that were broken off. You were just a branch, not the root. You know what what that's telling us? Don't you get get arrogant. Jesus is still the reason. And on our best day, we're still the branch and he's the root. And it's the root that gives life to the branches, not the other way around. Well, you may say, those branches were broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you were there because you do believe. So look what he says. So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. Notice how God is both kind and severe. He is severe toward those who disobeyed. How many of you guys know that's why we should obey immediately? One of our pillars of our vision this year, obey immediately. He is severe toward those who disobey, but kind to you if you continue to trust in his kindness. But if you stop trusting, you will also be cut off. And if the people of Israel turn from their unbelief, they will be grafted in again, for God has the power to graft them back into the tree. You by nature were a branch cut from a wild olive tree. So if God was willing to do something contrary to nature by grafting you into his cultivated tree, he will be far more eager to graft the original branches back into the tree where they belong. Does everybody see the the, the brevity and the power of that text? Jesus is the root and we're the branches. Now, Now here's the great thing. Jesus is the root And so whether you're a Jew by birth or not, you're not a better or worse branch, but you're a branch in the tree. And I don't know about you, I'm not here to compare myself to anybody else. I'm just grateful that Jesus loved me enough to be a part of the tree. I'm grateful that God would graft me into his family, bring me into his covenant promises that he gave starting with Abraham. And so why is this important? Why is this important? If you can understand by these scriptures, that means that what happens to Israel should matter to you. What happens to our Jewish brothers and sisters should matter. That means that you should pray for Israel, you should stand with Israel, you should declare God's protection, favor, and blessing over the nation of Israel. Amen. Now here's the thing, some people say, well, does that mean then that, 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 that the, the people of Israel are perfect? Not at all. I hate to break it to you. There are a lot of people that are Jew by birth, but they don't, they don't know Jesus and they live like heathens like everybody else. But just because they're not perfect does not mean that God did not choose them. God chose them just like the Bible says in Romans that he loved us before we loved him. He chose them. Therefore, because he chose them, we are connected to them. And you don't get to decide differently. You don't get to choose for that to not be your reality. Because it's not up to you. Because you're not the root, you're the branch. But I'm going to tell you, you say, well, they're not perfect, so why should we pray for them and be connected to them? Let me ask you a question. How many of you guys are married in this room? Is your spouse perfect? Men should say amen right now. Come on, hurry up. You're perfect, baby. Come on. Your spouse is not perfect, but you chose them and you are now connected to them. So the same way that your spouse is not perfect, but you're still connected, God chose Israel even though they're not perfect and yet we are still connected. And we have to be okay. Everybody say okay. We have to be okay with this understanding and revelation of those things. 
And so listen to me, Makers Church. It is not politically driven or motivated, but from a Bible-believing standpoint, from a kingdom-understanding standpoint, we must stand with, support, and pray for the nation of Israel. We must stand with, support, and pray for the nation of Israel because God commands us to and because we are connected with them through Jesus. He's the root and we're all the branches. Everybody still with me? Let me keep going further. Which means that these things happening in Israel are signs that we are approaching the end times. These things that we're starting to witness right now are signs that we're approaching the end times. It is literally setting the stage for the emergence of things that we read about in God's word regarding governments of the world forming one government, having one religion, and being led by a leader most in the church know as the Antichrist, one who will claim that he is the Messiah. All of these things are being formed right now. And then, listen, and then you look at the other things we see happening in the world that Jesus mentioned in Luke chapter 21. Are you ready? Luke 21. And then there will be strange signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. What did we all get crazy about this past Monday? Look here. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth, for the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud, come on, with power and great glory. So when all these things begin to happen, stand up and look for your salvation is near. We just saw a solar eclipse happen right here. A significant moment because we just had one just a few years ago. Listen, things are happening everywhere. Come on. God is trying to get the attention of humanity. God is trying to get the attention specifically of his people. And listen, if God's getting our attention, we should be listening. We should have the eyes of our heart open to see what God is saying and doing. In fact, God speaking, we should be listening. Jesus actually warned us in the same chapter, Luke 21, a few verses down, verses 34 through 36. Here's what he said. He said, watch out. Look to your neighbor and say, watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware like a trap. For that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. Keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. He's warning us. He's trying to get our attention. How about Matthew 24? Matthew 24, very similar. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 36 to 39. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But look what he says. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took all all of them away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, pastor, we're not there yet. We're not like the days of Noah. You need to open up your eyes. In fact, the apostle Paul described to a T prophetically what the last days would look like in our world in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses one through five. Look what he said. He said, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money 
They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. I told you a few minutes ago, stop acting like the end times is a thousand years away. If you get in God's word, even with the small sample this morning, you recognize we're a lot closer than most of us actually think that we are. There are things happening in the world. God is getting the attention of the saints for a reason. He's getting the attention of the saints for a reason and not so we should be motivated by fear and go buy toilet paper and hand sanitizer again. Because that's what we all did in 2020, didn't we? That's not why I'm talking about this. If you want to stock up, that's fine. Bless you as you go to Sam's and Costco in Jesus' name. He's getting our attention for us to understand things are shifting faster than we're paying attention to here in America. And my assignment today, because it, uh, the Lord just started to speak to me last night, is I, I feel like the Apostle Paul right now, when he said this in First uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 10, he said, for I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. Pastor, when is that day? I don't know, but I think it's a lot sooner than we think that it is. And I want us to understand what really matters. I want us to live pure and blameless lives before the Lord until he comes back. If you, you say, Pastor, I want to too, somebody say amen. So here's the verse that God put in my spirit just to quickly share, and then we're gonna pray together for a few minutes this morning. What really matters? What should we be doing? First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Are you ready? Here's what it says. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong and do everything with love. Is that not simple? Is it also not significant? Be on guard, be on guard. Stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, and do everything with love. Be on guard, what does that mean? That means that you better be paying attention. It means that you ought to be watching and seeing. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, we have an enemy who is like a roaring lion prowling around seeking someone to devour. Listen, he is trying to find any way he can to distract us from what's really happening. And so what is he doing? He's trying to do anything he can to get us to be ignorant of what's taking place in the earth. Can I submit to you today, we should not be ignorant, we should be very intentional. L looking and seeing what is happening, we should be very intentional. Romans chapter 13, one of my favorite texts, Romans chapter 13 verse 11, look at this. To live like this now is all the more urgent, for time is running out and it is a strategic hour in human history. It is time for us to wake up. Look to your neighbor and say, wake up. For our full salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Jesus even said in Matthew 26, 41, he said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. It's not enough for you to watch the news if you're not praying. Watch and pray. Everybody say, watch and pray. That's why I believe that mantle of intercession has come so strong to this house. In this season, we must be people that will watch, but we will also pray. We will see and understand, but we will not be afraid to get on our face and pray and intercede for our nation, for our city, for the nation of Israel, for the nations of the world. We will not be ignorant of those things. We must be on guard. What's the next thing he says? He says, stand firm. Somebody say, stand firm. Stand firm in your faith. Why do you need to stand firm in your faith? 
because there are things coming that will look scary to try to stir up fear and anxiety. It will try to mess with you from wars to elections to our economy. But listen to me, you stand firm in your faith and don't you be afraid of the things of this world. The Bible says greater is the God that is in us than the things that are in this world. So stand firm. Stand firm in your faith knowing that God's got it. God's going to do it. Even 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24 says, If God said it, he will do it. Don't get squishy in your faith. Stand firm. Stand firm. No matter what you see around you, the culture of the kingdom is the culture in which you live. The culture of God's kingdom is the one that you need to be accessing and operating. Look right here before I go to be courageous. First Peter chapter five, verses nine through 11. Take a decisive stand against him and resist every attack with strong and vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of troubles you endure. And then after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. And he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. Stand firm. So be on guard, stand firm. What's the next one? Be courageous. Somebody say be courageous. Be courageous, be courageous, be courageous, be courageous. Be courageous in this season with the truth. Don't you dare be silent when you need courage to stand up for truth in this season. If the end is near, that means that we should be doing everything we can to talk about the gospel of the kingdom so people can experience the same Jesus that saved us. Be courageous. Share your faith. Invite people to join us when we gather. Come on, believe in Jesus' name that he's given you power and authority to lay hands on the sick and they can recover, to cast out demons in his name, to be the men and women of God that he has designed us to be in this hour. You need courage to be what God's called you to be in this season. If you believe that, somebody say amen. And what does he say? He says, be strong. Be strong. How many of you guys know not strong in yourselves? Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, be strong in the power of the Lord. Be strong. Why do you have to be strong? Because I'm going to tell you something. In this next season, whatever happens in Israel or in other parts of the world or even in America, it's not going to be for the weak hearted. You're going to have to be strong. You're going to have to have some resolve in your heart. Be strong. Be strong. And then lastly, maybe the most important one of all of those things, do everything love. Do everything. Love. If we're going to do what God's called us to do, it's got to be bathed in love. You're not going to win nobody to the kingdom by winning an argument. You're not going to help anybody by offending them because you say, well, you're stupid and I'm right and you're wrong. You're going to have to love them. But pastor, what about when they're down and they don't get it and they're confused? You still love them? You gotta do it with love. Pastor, it's hard to do it with love. I understand that, but you're gonna have to find a way to ask the Lord to help you do it with love. Do it with love. Because listen to me, as we move forward and we continue to see the lines that divide the world and the church and the people of God, I want us to be known for our love. Known for our love. Because it's the love of the Father that drew us to Jesus. And I want us to be a reflection of that love in the world in which we live. Because listen, it is that love that people will say, tell me how you live the way you live. Tell me how you do the things you do. You love people when they don't love you back. How do you do that? It's because it's a love from the kingdom of God that transforms you from the inside out. And so, yeah, we're going to be firm in our faith. We're going to be strong and courageous, and, and then we're going to be on guard, but we're going to do everything with love. 
everything with love. You say, why is love that important? Go read 1 John 4. God is love. And when we do it with love, we're his reflection in the earth. Come on, if you believe that, I want you to stand to your feet all over the room today. Hallelujah. Come on, before we do anything, will you just take your hands and lift them? And will you thank God for his love in your life? unceasing even when I didn't believe it or receive it you still love me anyway thank you for your love God thank you for loving us that you would invite us into the kingdom hallelujah thank you for your love Jesus it's covered a multitude of sins transformed us we thank you for your love thank you for your love hallelujah here's what I want us to do I want if you will I want you to get out of your seat and come and find a place in the altar if you want to kneel we're going to be here for a minute so if you want to kneel you want to sit you can stand we're, but we got some things to pray about together we're going we're gonna to operate with that mantle of intercession today for a little while. And once you, hey, once you get here, come on, just keep, the, keep your eyes on Jesus. Sing that song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Come on, sing that. We're going to worship for a minute. Here's the first thing I want us to pray today. I want us to pray that we would continue to operate with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. 
that specifically we would see what God is doing in the earth. Listen, no more ignorance about the time and the seasons that we're in. No more, oh man, that's forever away. We're good. We don't have to worry about it. No, Lord, give us your heart. Give us wisdom and revelation to understand exactly what you're saying and exactly what you're doing. That's the first thing I want us to pray. If you say, Pastor, that's me. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're coming today, God, so grateful for who you are and all that you've done. But Lord, I pray that you would continue to let us move with a spirit of wisdom and revelation. God, that we would not be ignorant of the times or the seasons. God, that we would not, Lord, allow ourselves, God, to be distracted, God, by other things. God, distracted, God, by the enemy that would keep us from seeing what you are saying and what you are doing in the earth as it pertains to your timing, as it pertains, Lord, to your will and to your plan. Open the eyes of our heart, God. May we see clearly. May we see clearly. May we see clearly. God, with wisdom and revelation, with wisdom and revelation, God, of what you're doing in the nations, of what you're doing in your church, of what you're doing in this season. God, may we not be ignorant, but may we be in tune and be led by your spirit. In tune and led by your spirit in all things in all things may we be in tune and in led by the spirit of god thank you lord thank you lord for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the eyes of our heart are not open god every now and then but daily god we can see and move with the impulses of your spirit hallelujah thank you jesus the second thing I want us to do today is I want us to fervently pray for the nation of Israel. Listen to me. Pray that everybody that's a Jew by birth would encounter Jesus as Messiah. You read the text as to why. But even today, we pray for their protection. We bless Jerusalem in Jesus' name. We pray for peace. We pray for protection. And again, this has nothing to do with anything other than Jesus is the root and we're the branches. So we're going to pray for them right now. Listen, I, we're going to take a minute. Listen, if you feel the unction to pray in the spirit as you pray, begin to pray in the spirit. God is looking for intercessors that will pray for the people of Israel. So we're going to stand in the agreement right now. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus today, God, we pray for the nation of Israel. God, they are, God, they are our brothers and sisters by your, by your choice. Father, by what you have done. And so, Lord, right now we hold them up unto you. And, Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem right now in Jesus' name. We come against every attack of the enemy. God, we come against every missile, God, and drone that's been sent right now. Lord, that it would fall and it would not touch one person, not one family. God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. God, send your angels, God, to protect. God, send your angels, God, to literally, God, guide your people, God, and be with them right now. Lord, we bless the nation of Israel. God, we pray their governmental leaders, God, will not listen to their own voice, but they would listen to the voice of Yahweh. God, they would hear your voice and they would respond. Lord, we pray right now for every family, God, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, may your divine protection be upon them. And God, may somehow may they have the revelation, Jesus, that you are the Messiah. Jesus, that you are the Messiah. Let them come into the kingdom and understand they can be grafted back into the body, back into the tree of life right now. Lord, we pray for them. God, everyone who opposes, God, the nation of Israel, may they be defeated in shame. God, that spirit of antichrist and murder and evil in Islam, we apply the blood of Jesus right now and declare they are defeated. They are defeated. They are defeated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your people today. We bless your people today. 
protection, favor. God, may any, any demonic movement that has come against your people, may it be stopped today in the name of Jesus. We hold them up unto you today, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we get to be a part of your kingdom. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the root and we get to be one of the branches. But Father, we pray for our other branches. God, may they get engrafted back in. May they say yes to a covenant that started with their ancestor, Abraham. pray for other nations that their eyes would be open to also stand with Israel. Lord, we thank you for the nations that do, but Lord, we even pray right now, God, that the, the Spirit of God would begin to touch the heart and mind of other governmental leaders right now, that they would stand and fight and protect the nation of Israel. Lord, we pray for our government, God, who is not doing a very good job of stewarding that relationship. Lord, I pray send men and women filled with the Spirit of God, God, into every cabinet discussion, into every discussion with our governmental leaders, that the United States would stand with the nation of Israel, that the United States of America would pray for Israel, that we would protect Israel, that we would stand with them, not just in the natural, but we would stand with them in the Spirit. We would stand with them in the spirit. Lord, for every messianic believer, God, that is trying to advance your kingdom, God, strengthen them, bless them, use them to be a voice, God, for your people there. Father, we thank you for the privilege of interceding for our brothers and sisters in Israel right now. Protect them in Jesus' name. Be with them in Jesus' name. And God, may they have an encounter that they would understand that Jesus is who they are looking for. Jesus is who they are hoping for. That the eyes of their heart would be open to see that Jesus is their Messiah. God, we declare these things today and may we say yes to being people that always bless Jerusalem that always bless the nation of Israel. Every anti-Semitic movement, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Every group or every person lifting up their voice against the nation of Israel, may they be silenced right now in the name of Jesus. May they be silenced right now in the name of Jesus. God, and we declare peace and rest today and divine protection over your people, over our covenant family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, take a minute before we pray more. Just thank him. He's working right now. The Spirit of the Lord is working right now. Come on, the prayers of the righteous, even right here in Cincinnati, Ohio, have made their way to the Middle East, and God is working and moving because we're praying in faith, because we're believing that God is doing what only He can do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, 
Sandala Buru, Ko Sandala Barakayata, Yela Dada Buru, Sandala Buru, Ko Yela Dada 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 Bayanda Buru, Sandala. God in your love, you grafted us in. Thank you, God, in your love that you grafted us in and we get to share of every covenant promise that you made to Abraham. God, that covenant, God, we get to walk in it and experience the fullness of your goodness. Come on, somebody thank you that those covenant promises are ours. Thank you, Lord, for those covenant promises. We receive them today. Hallelujah. Here's the last thing we're gonna pray for. That in this season, that we will do as the Apostle Paul said, we will understand what matters. We'll understand what matters. And that in this time, as we move forward together, that we're on guard, that we stand firm in our faith, that we are courageous, that we are strong, and that we do everything in love. Put that scripture on the screen for me, please. I want us to pray this. And listen, you may say, Pastor, I practice all those things now. Good. Pray that they would stay that way and that God would continue to use you to advance his kingdom. If you say, Pastor, I'm good in a couple of those, but I need more of those. Listen, pray into them today that God would awaken those so we could say yes to doing what he has purposed us to do, to make disciples and make a difference everywhere we go in Jesus' name. Come on, can we pray this last prayer together? Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we have interceded. God, we have, God, let you search our hearts. And now I pray, God, that we come into agreement, Lord, today, that we would always understand what matters the most. God, that in this time, God, as we approach come some significant times in our world, Lord, that we would be people that are on guard, that we would be watching. God, that our attention would not be pulled to temporal and frivolous things, but our eyes would be on what's taking place in the Spirit. May we be on guard. May we be people that watch. May we also be people that pray. May we watch and pray in this season. May we watch and pray in this season. And Lord, I pray that we would stand firm. We would stand firm in our faith. God, you're going to give us the power. God, you're going to give us the authority. May we stand firm in our faith that we would not say yes to a woke gospel, that we would not say yes to a watered-down understanding, but we would say yes to the culture of the kingdom. We would say yes to the gospel of the kingdom, and we would stand firm. We would stand firm in the faith that you have given us. Stand firm in the faith that you have given us. God, I pray that we are men and women of courage. We are men and women of courage that we will share our faith, that we will walk in authority and power, that we will not be silent and we will not run in fear and anxiety, but you would give us courage in this season to walk in the fullness of what you have for us. Even today, God, I pray may your saints feel your strength. 
May we be strong in the power of the Lord. May we be strong in the power of the Lord. God, that we're not weak need. God, that we're not worried and afraid. But we are strong in you, Jesus. And most of all, that we would do everything with love. Even right now, Holy Spirit, we pray, baptize us in love. Every word that we say, every encounter that we have, every day that we live, may we be motivated by love. And may we do everything. God, as we are on guard, may we do it with love. As we stand firm in our faith, may we do it in love. As we're courageous, may we also have love. As we move in strength, may we also move in love. Father, for I believe it is your love that will draw the lost into the kingdom of God. That will draw cities and nations into the kingdom of God because we will be known for our love in you. God, may we today be saturated in your love. In everything, God, our words, our actions, the motives of our heart. Come on, somebody say, Lord, I receive your love. Come on. I receive your love. I receive your love. I receive your love. North Korea. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's do this. We'll, we'll, we'll intercede and come against the demonic forces that are trying to work through North Korea. And listen, then we're going to pray, and then I want everybody, we're going to be seated. I want to share a few things with you. We'll, we'll worship in giving, and we'll hug, we'll hug folks in love. But let's pray specifically against that, what our, one of our elders has said. Father, right now, that we come against any, any demonic forces that are trying to lead the nation of North Korea. God, any nation, God, that is trying to partner with Iran. Father, we apply the blood of Jesus and we pray may their plans and plots be foiled and stopped right now in Jesus' name. Father, that you would send angels, God, to the nation of North Korea. God, and you would stop, God, what they are plotting and planning. Lord, that we would, God, believe right now, God, that your people are protected and God, that nations would not rise against. But Father, they would be... God, literally, God, turned away in defeat. They would be turned away. God, anybody that does not love Jerusalem, God, may they be defeated in shame. May they be defeated in shame. In Jesus' name. May they be defeated in shame. In Jesus' name. May your hand be upon the nation of Israel today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love, Jesus. Come on, let's do it. Hey, as you're going back to your seats, I want you to hug seven or eight people and tell them you love them. Come on. Come on, tell them you love them. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come on, hey, once you get back to your seats, why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what he's done today? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. love Jesus, somebody say amen in this room. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, as we move forward into this season, well, pastor, I didn't think Sundays were for prayer. If you think that, you may be mistaken here. We have to be people of prayer. When the Spirit says pray, we're going to pray in Jesus' name. Now, I will tell you, we pray throughout every week. Monday mornings, Monday nights, Tuesday mornings and Thursday mornings, Wednesday nights. God is doing something as a result of us saying yes to prayer. Come join us. 
Wednesday nights at 7 is when we try to all gather as much as we can. We've got live worship. We've got just intercession happening. Join us, but find a time and pray with us, and we're going to continue to intercede and be intercessors in Jesus' name. Amen. A few things I want to remind you of, church, that's so important. If you're new today, we're so honored that you're worshiping with us. We would love a chance to just build relationship and meet you. The way we do that here is there is a, a guest card that you can grab uh, underneath the seat in front of you, or you can scan those QR codes that you see. That'll just give you an opportunity to share a little bit about yourself. And then if you fill out one of those cards, please take a minute. Go to our guest center in our full year. Pastor Melissa and I are there every week. We'd love to meet you and your family, give you a free gift for worshiping with us. But we look forward to building relationship together in Jesus' name. Also, uh, right after uh, uh, this service, during second service today, we have something called Lunch and Learn. Uh, if you have not ever been through Lunch and Learn, it's the easiest and fastest way for you to find out all about Maker's Church, where we've been, where we're going, uh, what God has brought you here for. So we encourage you, jump into that. We've got a full class already, but you can be a part of that today during our second service. Uh, also want to remind you, we talked about this last week, how many of you guys know that our kids' ministry is continuing to grow? Listen, how many of you guys know it's a blessing that we have sons and daughters coming to the house in droves? It's a blessing. I want as many as God will send, and I mean that. Because there are generations that we're rising for everything for God designed them to be. And so we want to, but listen, we need moms and dads. We need men and women that will love children to say yes. If you say, I want to serve, see Pastor Melissa, see Heather Kozlowski. She can answer some questions or just anybody on our kids team. If you're interested, no matter what it is, we need your help as we continue to love and lead our kids together. Amen. Amen. Uh, next week. The 21st, we're going to be uh, celebrating the, the feast, the spring feast of the Lord. I'm going to be talking about Passover in the morning, the purpose and power of Passover in our morning services. Then next Sunday night, everybody say next Sunday night. Next Sunday night, 6 p.m., we're having a special Passover service. And there's going to be a time of praise, and it's going to be a time of prayer and intercession, declaring the blood of Jesus, not just over our homes, but over the hearts of the world together. Listen, there's something special that happens at Passover. Remember, Passover happened the very first one. Everybody that had blood on the doorpost of their home, the judgment of God passed over them. So we want to believe in this season, the judgment of God will pass over America because the saints will apply the blood of Jesus to our nation together. So it's going to be a powerful time. Come join us next Sunday night. Uh, all of our men in the room, guys, we have an event coming up on the 27th called Biscuits and Bullets, and it's exactly what it sounds. You get to eat biscuits, and you get to shoot some bullets. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. We've got a great group. You can see Damien. He's the guy back there screaming like a banshee. He can help you get information. Um, he's on our men's team, but but it's we're just going out uh, September, I mean September, April 27th, 9 a.m to I think 1 p.m. Uh, the cost is only $10, but bring your own uh, ammunition, your own firearms. It's just a good God time that we get to have some time together on the 27th. Um, summer camp, we talked about summer camp. Summer camp is coming for our kids and our young people. Every year, our kids encounter Jesus. They grow in the goodness of God. And they need to come this year and be a part of it. So moms and dads, grandparents, it's not just going to bless you with some free time. It's an investment into them. So check that out. You can see all the details on our app. Everything we talk about, you can download our app, see all those details, join, uh, respond that way. It's just a beautiful thing that we're doing together. Uh, but I'm thankful for the community that we have here at Makers Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So our ushers are coming right now. We're going to worship in our giving today. Next week, next week I'm going to talk about our first fruits offering. We do a first fruits offering every year. How many of you guys know a first fruits offering is biblical? Oh, I get to teach next week. Okay. It's a biblical thing that we get to do together. And I want to tell you, God has blessed this house supernaturally since we started bringing first fruits offerings together. He's blessed this house supernaturally in every possible way. Next week, I'm going to be talking about this year as we do something very special with our first fruits offering. So be here. But today we get to bring our tithe and our offering. Now, how many of you guys know that every good thing that you have is because of the Lord? And God has blessed you. Listen, even says it in Genesis 12, God has blessed you to be a blessing. And so every time that you bring tithe and give offering, you're not only obeying God, you're saying yes to saying, I will be a blessing to not just here, but our city and the nations around the world. So we're gonna give today, we're gonna give in faith and we're gonna honor the Lord. Uh, and so you can see some several ways to give digitally. You can give in person when we say amen. Uh, but I wanna do this. I want us to pray together. Um, and then listen, as you give, you're going to be dismissed. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you as you leave today, it is your assignment. Every week we declare it, go make disciples and make a difference. This week, 
you go with courage and strength, go make disciples and make a difference. God is doing something now and we get to be a part of it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So listen, we're going to pray. You're going to give. You're going to be dismissed. We love you. We honor you. Can't wait to see you this week for prayer. But let's thank the Lord for his blessings. Father, we love you so much. Thank you, Lord, for the, your, spirit of, your spirit that was here today. Lord, we pray that as we give today, God, we do not give out of fear. We give in faith. God, because you've been so good to us. And God, as we bring tithe and give offering today, Lord, I pray that your word says, Jesus, that you receive it. May you receive it and may every covenant promise attached to tithing and giving, God, be real in the hearts and lives of every believer. And as we have been blessed, may we continue to be a blessing. So Lord, today, I pray you take this, you multiply it, you use it for the advancement of your kingdom every way that you desire. And we give you praise knowing that our trust is in you. And God, you always meet us at the point of your our need. We thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bless you this morning as you give. Makers Church, be blessed. We'll see you Wednesday night for prayer, 7 p.m. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us today at Makers Church. We would love to hear from you. If you gave your life to the Lord today or have any prayer requests, let us know in the comments below or message us on social media. If you'd like to plan an in-person visit to experience what God is doing here firsthand, you can schedule your visit at makerschurch.com or simply click the link in the description below. Also, stay connected with us on social media. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay updated on upcoming events and to engage with our amazing online community. Thank you once again for being a part of Maker's Church. We can't wait to see you next Sunday.